six more months, they could say no and decide to go a different direction. That's fine. So it must have an expiration date. You can mutually agree to end this listing. Now the word mutual means both parties have to agree. My client could go, Raymond, I really don't like the shirt you're wearing. And I'm like, well, I really don't like the tie you're wearing. Let's agree to terminate this listing. Okay, as long as both parties agree. That's what mutual means. I have on several occasions said no. I had a client come to me and go, hey, I really want to terminate this. I don't think, I'm like, dude, we had an open house this weekend. We had three buyers go through. I am not going to sign this. I'm going to give it a week to see if we get an offer. It's a mutual release. Both parties must know or must okay it. Hey, I have a question, Raymond. Sure. So if, if it's a mutual agreement and both parties agree to, okay, sever ties, will you still get paid for the initial time or does that mean sever everything it technically severs everything okay but there have been plenty of deals on one of those deals where i said no the guy literally came to me and said look i want my nephew who just graduated to list this and i told him exactly what you said dude i've got signs advertising and he literally said, I'll give you $500 if you sign the mutual release. Okay. okay. You guys could agree on that. You could literally say, yeah, pay me and I'll release it. Otherwise, I'm keeping it under contract so that you can't do anything. Now, right. in the real world, here's what happens. Then the seller becomes an asshole because he goes, okay, fine. I'll just deny every showing you give to me and now you're going to be wasting your time so most of the time when a client says i want to release most brokers usually go okay because they know in the long run that seller can make it really hard and i end up wasting more time and effort because he just goes oh sorry can't show the house today so even though it's mutual you've got that there is that advantage that you can hold over their head they can pay you to release it i've seen that they can just make it so tough that you eventually go you know what leave so uh but tech has to be mutual and it completely severs all right breach if one party breaches the contract the best example i can give you is the fair housing issue Suppose you list a house and all of a sudden your seller says, you know, I don't want you to sell it to the Jewish people. Dude, you breached the fair housing clause. I'm out. Because I cannot allow you to operate illegally and be involved or I'm in trouble. Um, I had an agent, not an agent. I had a friend of mine. I was selling his investment property. <coughs> that had a tenant in it. And every time we called, the tenant had an excuse as to why to not show the property. Oh, my grandma's in town or the dog's not in the crate. I assumed that they were afraid that they were going to lose their place of residence. So I called David, I'm like, David, dude, you're violating the listing agreement. I can't show the property, that's part of the listing. So I'm gonna terminate this listing right now until you go have a conversation with your tenant and either explain to them that they will stay or perhaps you can evict them, I don't care. But you are currently breaching the listing agreement, so I'm out, all right? The last one is operation of law, like bankruptcy. Client calls you and says, hey, I'm going into bankruptcy. That would terminate a listing as well. Foreclosure to terminate a listing. So what you have, Ross, did we lose you? Are you there? Yeah, we lost Ross. What you have are seven ways to terminate this listing. 
Completion, death, destruction, expiration, mutual release, breach, or operation of law. Seven, right? Now, what I want to do is flip back over here and let you see something else. So there are six responsibilities we've talked about. Care, obedience, loyalty, and disclosure. During the listing, well, technically, during the listing, you have seven. Let me start again, see if I can make this correct. During the listing, you have six responsibilities, all right? These six are during your listing. When your agency terminates, these two will stay forever. They are accounting and confidentiality. All right. Accounting and confidentiality are the last two responsibilities you owe. However, they are responsible forever. So we are getting close to tax time. Suppose my client calls me and says, Raymond, I was doing my taxes and I noticed on the closing last year, there is a missing $500 of earnest money. Where's that money at? I cannot tell my client, sorry, I have no agency with you now. No, it's an accounting issue. That accounting issue stays with me forever. I have to be able to say, okay, well, hold on. Let me call the title company and do this math again and we'll call you back. Thumbs up, all right. Confidentiality. What your client tells you in confidence, you cannot use against them later in a deal. So if your client comes in and says, hey, Cameron, I want to sell my house because my wife's pregnant, my daughter's run away, my cat's on heroin, all of this stuff, all right? You can't later go find a buyer and go, hey, dude, let's make an offer because his daughter's running away, his cat's on heroin, yada, yada, yada. No, he told you that in confidence. Therefore, you cannot use it against him. All right. So the six responsibilities during agency, you have all six. After agency, you have these two forever. All right. That. Those are the six, so thumbs up, cool. Now, let me go back to the board because this is gonna be fun for you guys. I say that and that's not true. We talked earlier that you will have um, single agency where you work with one client, one customer. I told you that was 90% of the deal. Then I told you that we have this situation where we have two customers that is called non-agency. Well, guess what the third possibility is? I have two clients. Now, here's pet peeve number two for me in the real estate world. So let's make sure we get this. If you work with the seller, you are called the listing agent. Pretty smart, right? If you work with the buyer, everybody watch this. You are called the selling agent. No, that is not a typo. There is no such thing as a buying agent. 
it's either a listing agent or a selling agent, all right? So think about this. When you work with a seller of a home, what is your responsibility? You are to market it for sale, right? That's all your job is. I listed a friend of mine's house, probably my best friend. We've been friends, God, I hate to say it, almost 50 years. And when I listed his home, he asked me, what are you going to do to sell it? And I, and I could only get away with this because it was Brent. And I told him, absolutely nothing. And he said, what? I said, no. Truly, as a listing agent, my job is to list the property for sale. I market it. I'll put it on the MLS. I'll put it on Zillow. I'll put it up on a flyer at my work. I'll put it in the newspaper. I'll do all of that. If I work with the buyer, their job is to come into my listing, right? And they are the ones that are selling that house to their client. When a buyer's agent walks in and goes, oh, look at this beautiful house. It's got a bedroom for every child. Can't you imagine your grand piano sitting? They are the ones selling the house, right? Therefore, they are called the selling agent. Thumbs up. Lashana didn't see a thumbs up. Yeah. Let's make sure we understand one more time. A listing agent works with the seller. The buyer has a selling agent represent them because that agent is the one selling the attributes of the house to the client. They're the ones that are making the house look, oh, beautiful pool and here's three bedrooms. So they're the ones that are truly selling it. <coughs> so when Brent said, what are you going to do to sell the house? I said, nothing. He said, well, once if a buyer calls? Well, if a buyer calls, I'll bring him in. But at that point, I'm representing the buyer, not you. This is called dual agency. Dual agency. In essence, right here, dual. Now, in your book, I want you to write this word. Because in Indiana, we call it limited agency. Limited agency. And you will see why when we get back. You can say dual if you want. It's kind of like the word ain't. I'll know what you mean. I'll just think you're an idiot for saying it. All right. It's called limited agent means I represent the seller and the buyer on the same deal. That's the key part. Seller and the buyer on the same deal. Sometimes agents will call this a me, me deal because I am getting paid on both sides. If you do this on a small house, it's called a mini me. <clears throat> Come on, it's Monday, cut me some slack. So the agents will call it a me, me deal. In essence, you have two clients. Hey, what do you think you should offer? Well, I don't know. What do you think we should offer? Let me talk to my client. What do you think? Okay, we we're going to offer this. Well, that's a good number. Thank you. That's actually what it is. So now let's go back. 90% of your deals, one client, one customer, right? You could actually have two clients. 
I am a limited agency on this deal. 